Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Grilla Grills of Holland, Michigan, makers of wood pellet, charcoal grills, and professional pellet smokers. Grilla Grills are designed for ease of use to improve your grilling or smoking skills. More information at grillagrills.com. By Tri-County Logging, experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny olson Silic, and we've got an exciting show lined up for you this week. Archery season is in full swing now. We'll be out in the woods later this week gathering some footage to share with you on that. But speaking of deer hunting, on this week's show, we have a couple of special deer hunts to share with you. I'll take you to the Thumb where we meet a young lady who loves deer hunting and has an incredible story to share with us. You won't want to miss that. And Jimmy and the guys have some other excitement in store for us this week too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. We're going to have a really cool hunt from the early antlerless season, and we're also going to stop in with a group that's been doing a lot of videotaping around the state of Michigan when it comes to deer hunting for years and years. And we're actually going to have time to learn a little bit more about logging a piece of property and how that can affect your wildlife. So lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By G5 Outdoors. Makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. To those who say we can't build a healthy economy while protecting the environment, DTE Energy has something to say. We're already doing it. Because you don't get to the forefront of cleaner, efficient energy by talking about it. DTE Energy. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years. Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. Here on Michigan Out of Doors, we don't normally show you hunts that happen on game ranches, but in this next story, we're going to do that. We're taking exception to show you an incredible story about a celebration of life. We're at the Trophy Ranch in Ubley, Michigan. Uh, Chris and Kevin, Anthony, our gracious hosts, um, been a great, been a great partnership, and uh, they're as all in on this as we are, and it uh, it works really well for us. It's 160 acres. It is a high fence ranch, and that's mainly so that we can ensure success for our clients. Addison, where are you guys from? Ubley. Ubley. All right. What's happening today? Uh, we're here uh, for the path hunt. Uh, daughter Addison here was diagnosed in February with a rare uh, adult ov ovarian cancer. Um, she uh, has been through six rounds of chemo, had an extensive operation actually before the chemo. And uh, as of Friday of last week, uh, she has, was uh, officially told she's in remission cancer free. Heck yeah. Amen. Yes. So we're we're Good. uh we're celebrating um with this hunt this weekend <laughs> and uh we're looking forward to a good time and hopefully she can shoot a nice deer and put icing and icing on the okay. celebration. <laughs> so. Addison, you're one tough cookie, hey? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. How old are you? I'm 13. I just actually turned 13. Just turned 13. So this is not the first time you've been hunting either, hey? No. Tell me a little bit about some of your experience. I've been hunting for four years. Okay. 
tell them what you shot so far in the last uh, four years? My first deer was a six point. My second deer was a eight point. My third deer was a seven point. And my fourth deer was a nine point. Nine point? Sweet. Man, all right. So you're pretty deadly. Yeah. All right. You excited about today? Yeah. Today's hunt was a celebration of Addison's great news of being cancer free, and she and her dad were pretty excited to hit the woods. Along for the hunt to help guide were Dennis Dobson of Double D Whitetails and Randy Brown, board member of the Path Foundation. Bob says Path Foundation has been hosting these hunts for about 12 years now and happened out of necessity. Well, we do um, make-a-wish type hunts, for lack of a better term. Um, make-a-wish stopped doing hunts 10, 12 years ago and uh, we were already formed and we were doing different things, uh, providing kids that didn't have an opportunity to learn to hunt, providing equipment to kids that couldn't afford it. Uh, uh, we do grants for high school skeet and archery teams, um, and we're still doing that, um, but we've added the make-a-wish type hunts to the menu, and it's a big portion of what we do now. We provide the entire package for the kids and their families. Uh, we butcher the deer, which is right on site, which is really nice. Um, we get the deer mounted for them and we present it to them at our ba annual banquet in April. And uh, it doesn't, so it doesn't cost anything. Um, they're here for three days and uh, it's just a nice hunting camp type atmosphere for the weekend. What kind of gun are you shooting there? I'm shooting a 450 Bushmaster. Right. Is it broken in yet? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. We do three three-day deer hunts. Our first group is uh, all kids. Uh, our second group is uh, generally people that are terminal or very close to that. Uh, our third group is wounded warriors, pretty much. Uh, it's been fun. While Addison and Chris were having fun out in the woods, Chris shared his gratitude for this experience. It's a great organization. Uh, what they do for the kids and the adults that have difficulties and stuff, and they put this on for them to give them an exciting um, experience is just unbelievable. And I personally, and I know Addison also, um, cannot um, express our appreciation for that that they're doing this and uh, and given the excitement to the individuals that are have challenges in their life. Addison's challenges are mostly behind her now. She still has a little pain from her surgery and she says her energy level isn't quite back to normal yet, but she was up for a walk tonight. With less than an hour of daylight left, Dennis suggested they get out of the blind and walk the road back to see if they could spot and stalk a bigger buck on the way out of the woods. Addison was all for it. Dennis spotted a buck working towards us, so everyone quickly got set up for Addison to take the shot. That's him. Get to safety up. Wait till Jenny says okay. Right now, right now, right now. Take him. <laughs> Look at that. Oh <laughs> this humongous buck just came out. <laughs> you wanted to shoot that other one. <laughs> what do you think? I have no words. <laughs> you got a monster, kid. You got a monster. I love you. Let's go up. Let's go take a look at him. Aww. Your dad made you cry? I'm at the point in my life that it's I have much more enjoyment watching them harvest animals than I do. Myself, I mean, don't get me wrong, I still like to harvest an animal, but um, the enjoyment comes watching them. This was an unforgettable moment for dad and daughter alike. All right, are we counting these? Okay, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. <sighs> 
A 19 pointer? <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's anyone that deserves that, it's you, girl. Good job. So proud of you, kid. Can't be more happier. Just emotional, everything that she's been through the last year. This is just icing on the cake for her. That's Everyone, this is Addison's mom, Brenda. Hi, Addison's mom. <laughs> Look at that. It's moments like these that define what the PATH Foundation is all about. It's passing along the heritage and cherishing every moment in this incredible creation we call Michigan's Out of Doors. This is a dream. Wake me up now. Well, as you can see, that was a very special hunt, and thanks to everybody that made that possible. What we're going to do now is stop in in southern mid-Michigan and show you what happened on the early antlerless season. We're uh, here at the orchard, and we're going to try to shoot a doe tonight. It's early doe season, so be the maiden voyage of uh, this 450 pistol. It's an XP100 bolt action Remington pistol. It's a fully custom made job and uh, we'll see, see how well it goes. We have known Mark Klett for years and when he said he was going to be doing a little early season doe hunting, well we jumped at the chance to get one of our cameras alongside of him. Gabe Van Warmer was able to get with Mark tonight and they were ready for a very good evening of hunting. Uh, well, we're in Shiawassee County, and uh, this is another field that didn't get planted this year, as a whole lot of fields in the area did not, and uh, so it's been planted to a cover crop here, and it's mostly radishes and uh, turnips, some brassicas I think in here, and I think there's clover in here as well, so, but uh, basically saving the soil for next year, saving the nutrients, this makes like a perfect natural food plot uh, for the deer and, and uh, I think we'll probably see a bunch of them come out but uh, we maybe won't give them a whole lot of time to come out or we'll get the first good doe we see. Well these 450 Bushmasters have become very popular here in the state of Michigan and it wasn't long before Mark and Gabe had some deer filtering into the field. There's a one one came out so just now. It's, it looks like it's a bigger fawn. Maybe not this year, but uh, it's it's alone, so it clearly doesn't see us. We'll just let it let it feed there. See what else happens. I think we did okay. It ran into the brush there, but uh, should be right in there. She was looked like her legs were coming out from underneath her. It's a lot of fun. That took a long time. For... Yeah, it's been what 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the fastest hunt I've ever seen. Yeah, and we waited a long time <laughs> for yeah. her to turn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we waited longer for her to turn than we did to uh, for her to come out. To 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 come out. Yeah. So. Oh, the farmer's going to be happy, huh? Yeah, one more, one down, many to go. 
Okay, we, this is right where we saw her go. And there's some, some blood right there in one of the radishes. So good tracks right through here. She, somewhere right here she dove sideways. I think it's there's a bunch of blood right here. Oh, there's our deer. It's it's gonna make us work just a little bit. <laughs> so this is really thick in here, <laughs> and uh, clearly it was a, a hit that should have been uh, pretty fatal. It was, but uh, it it's gonna make us work a little. Luckily, it was curving right toward the edge, so we probably are only 20 yards away from the field and it looks like we're 500 when you look in here. So, we'll get it out and get it taken care of. Well, special thanks to Mark and Gabe for making that story happen, and it's always fun to get out and do a little bit of hunting, and when you can capture it on camera, well, it makes it that much better. And this next story, we're gonna show you a group that's actually been doing that now for close to a decade. We started Michigan Whitetail Pursuit about 10 years ago and uh, started as a project. And the whole idea behind it was to show a full season with multiple hunters, be husbands and wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, all different ages, all different demographics, showing what goes into their season from the beginning of season all the way to late season. But then have that blend of you know, your compound hunter, your traditional hunter, muzzleloader, you know, all the different things that go into that. Oh, that's a good buck. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Michigan Whitetail Pursuit over the years has kind of really evolved. We're going into our 10th season now and we're very excited about that. And a couple of new things that we have uh, coming right now is we're starting a new on the road series. And so we have this team of pro staff that are um, hunting outside of Michigan as well. And they've been filming their hunts and we haven't really had a place to uh, show those hunts. And so we're creating a place for that. So we've got guys hunting up in Canada um, as well as Kansas, Iowa, Ohio, um, anywhere from the do-it-yourself yeah. Michigan hunter or, you know, a semi-guided or guided hunt. So we're really excited about showing that to our viewers this coming season. That's new. Uh, we also formed a new group uh, on Facebook. So our existing public page, we have about 60,000 followers. On this closed group mm -hmm. that we created, we created this spring and we've already got close to 5,000 members of it and it's really a place for our followers and members to share their stories it's not all about us we want to hear their stories over the last several years a lot of hunters out there have started to film their own hunts and this is a lot easier than it used to be with some of the new camera arms on the market we have regular jobs and we're out there self-filming we don't have that cameraman all the time over our shoulders that's nice if we can get that, but it doesn't always work that way. And so we have partnered with Fourth Arrow. They've really enabled us to easily, economically self-film our own hunts. And uh, we've encouraged our followers to, to do the same and share their stories with us. It's, I've learned since I was very young, I, my first deer I shot when I was 16 years old, uh, back in the early 90s. And I still have footage of that deer, my very first deer after I took it. And that, that deer really messed me up in a good way. It made me completely sick for hunting. It's, it's, it's a, a great sickness. So uh, I'm, I'm grateful that I still have those stories uh, that I can share with my family, uh, as well as myself, just for my own, just preserving that memory is really special. If you've never taken a camera into the woods before, you just might want to give it a try. It's a great way to preserve the memory of your hunt. Good luck to all of the hunters hitting the woods over the next couple of months. 
Well, if you are a deer hunter here in the state of Michigan, whether that's in the Upper Peninsula or in the southern part of the Lower Peninsula, managing your forest can be a big deal. Whether you're putting in food plots or just clearing space, doing a little bit of logging may be something that you want to consider. When it comes to logging, some folks get a little suspect about it, but it's actually a very important part of managing your forests for wildlife and for the health of the forest in general. So what we do, what our company does, and we have done for the past almost 50 years, is we do selective hardwood cutting. Um, we really don't do a whole lot with pine, popple, those type of species that you find more so up north, um, more of a deciduous forest you find in this part of the state and this part of the country, northeastern part of the country. So what we do is we go in and we selectively cut specific trees that we mark um, that should come out. Some may be damaged, some may be diseased, some are just a mature state and they need to be harvested. Say specifically for deer hunting, one of the, one of the best things you can do to improve your herd is to harvest timber. And the reason for that is you're gonna open the canopy. So over time your canopy fills in and then you don't, get sh you don't get sunlight to the forest floor. So you need to um, open the canopy. You're gonna get all kinds of uh, new species coming up with plants, trees, um, and also it's gonna help the trees that are existing to get more sunlight and to grow further because there is a point in time where a forest basically is, is not healthy. It may look beautiful, it may look like a park, but in fact, all the trees are way too big and they're too mature. So there's a time to harvest, it's like a crop. You gotta cut them at some point in time or they will die. Keeping your forest healthy is important. And I asked Shane just how this all works if someone is wanting to start this process. It all starts usually by phone. Uh, we set up a date and a time, we get together. Um, usually the first thing we do is we walk the whole property with the landowner. We look at um, all the property lines. We look at uh, what type of trees are there, what species we're talking about. And then we, we make a plan, we figure out, okay, Mr. Landowner, what is it that you would like to get from this? What is your objective? Do you want to do it for deer management? Do you want to do it for the health of the forest in the future? Do you want to be able to cut again in X amount of years? So we set up plans and time um, to improve that woodlot. So it, it's all a lot of conversation on what the landowner wants. We always ask their opinion. Some people may not know. So then we give our advice on what we've, you know, what we've seen over the years and what works. We come in, we mark the trees that should come out and every tree gets graded accordingly, whether it's, uh, there's several different grades of lumber, and we grade that and we price it accordingly, we put it on a sheet, we go to the landowner and we say, we've marked X amount of trees, X amount of dollars, and then we sign a contract and start harvesting. Logging can provide the landowner with some rather nice compensation, and it was really interesting to follow the trees from the woodlot to the mill. So the logs come in from the woodlots, uh, which are selectively harvested um, through tri-county logging, they're gonna go to the, um, what we call the yard out here, and they're gonna be graded by species, by you know, grade of log. Um, they'll in turn be put into different piles and uh, debarked through our debarker system, um, put into the mill and milled out into uh, boards. The sawdust from that mill is actually gonna fire our kilns. Um, those kilns are going to you know, dry the material and uh, take them down to about 8 to 15 percent moisture content uh, in which we get uh, you know, dried boards. Watching the trees go from the truck through the process is really something and just the drying process alone was pretty impressive. The stacker barn is going to take the uh, green boards and it's going to stack them uh, into perfect um, widths that you know spacings between each board so it can be dried evenly. It's going to go to the pre-drying facility, which is going to knock out the, uh, you know, some of the moisture content before going to the dryer. Um, each, our kiln drying facility can hold up to 1.3 million board feet of lumber. We run it at about 1 million board feet. Um, and it usually takes anywhere from 25 to 35 days per run. Tri-County Logging basically services from Mount Pleasant south here in Michigan and has been working with landowners for about 50 years. Tri-County Logging, which is a division of HMI Hardwoods. Tri-County Logging is our actual logging division. We're going into um, do sustainable forestry in landowners' woodlots. You can find us at uh, the Department of Natural Resources website uh, under Industry Foresters. 
Um, the HMI hardwoods is going to be more of our um, world distribution uh, you know, part of the company where we're uh, distributing lumber throughout the world. Managing your forest has a lot of benefits. So whether that's clearing some space for sunlight or for a food plot, it's important for landowners to think through the best way to manage their forest for the wildlife that call it home. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks. We've got a lot of exciting fall adventures to share with you here on the show. We'll be out doing some upland bird hunting, a little bit of fall fishing, maybe even some waterfowl hunting. Make sure you stick around and join us. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always do that online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a great way to kind of keep tabs on us. Our website is michiganoutofdoorstv.com. Full episodes of the show there every week if you miss something. And if you're ever on YouTube, you can actually subscribe to our channel there and get an email every time we post something new. Make sure that you are joining us over the next several weeks. Everything is happening right now in the state of Michigan. What a great time to be a sportsman. So get out there and enjoy our great state. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By EOTech, a Michigan company, equipping law enforcement and sportsmen alike with quality optics, creating jobs for Michigan workers, on the web at eotechgear.com. By Jay Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jay's. On the web at jaysportinggoods.com. Closed captioning provided by Randy's Hunting Center, serving Michigan as Ruger and Leupold's National Dealer of the Year, an inventor of Ruger's 450 Bushmaster rifle. When I want to fire away I am a Michigan man.